there, I am Tiffany Ricks at Hackware. Hackware is an AI-based security awareness and training platform. Today, I am excited because we are going to talk to you about secure coding. We're going to show you how to secure your code in Python. And uh, we're using a cool tool called Bandit which makes it easy. It looks for common security issues. You don't have to write test code to test your code. Um, this is a great tool to make sure that you're, you're um, keeping your application safe. Uh, we plan to every other Friday give free secure coding sessions. And, um, and so I'm excited that you, would, that you joined us today. So let's jump right in. The um, I wanted to just show you, you can go to GitHub and search for Bandit. And Bandit, as I stated before, is a free open source tool that allows you to scan your Python code. And it looks for common security issues. It says it's a security lint, uh, linter, and it goes through the entire installation process. Um, just a little bit of help. When I installed this on um, my uh, environment, I'm using for this demo a, a Mac OS environment. Um, I can tell you to use this Python and we, and we're using for this demo Python three. So the first step is to install using the Python three, this code here that works better. Um, and then from there you have to activate. Once you activate, then the install process is much smoother. The, the mistake I made was I immediately jumped from, um, I didn't create a virtual environment, and I immediately jumped to uh, this step here, where instead of using, and, and so I immediately typed in pip3, install bandit, and the install process looked like it worked well, but it kept saying it didn't recognize what band it was. And I took some steps back, did some searches, and uh, for, for my sake, it was helpful creating a virtual environment first, activating it, and then moving on to the Python, I mean the uh, PIP3 install bandit. And I know you're wondering, why do I have to take uh, why am I watching a uh, Twitch session on secure coding? Secure coding and why is a security awareness company talking about secure coding? Secure coding is essential to security awareness. And, you know, it's not, you, you, you should be learning about how you could avoid phishing attacks, but engineers need to understand how do I build resilient applications? And a lot of times as an engineer, I wasn't taught in school about the way to build code, understanding how you can infuse cybersecurity practices in your code um, that wasn't taught in school. And then sometimes in the work environment, when we're working in you know corporate America or wherever, we may rely on security engineers or system engineers to test our code, but it should be um, good cyber posture for engineers to uh, build their code and build it with a security mindset. And so that's why um, we're talking about security awareness today and every other Friday. And, um, and you know, once you finish these install steps, I'm going to walk you through how to actually test your code. But I also want to give you some takeaways. And this takeaway on resourceshackware.com, uh, Wilson, who's an engineer at Hackware, he'll put a link in the comments below. And um, this is important because we're giving you the details on, you know, why is it important to have a secure code practice, you know, for yourself and for your team. And 
And when you hear in the news about, you know, another Facebook data breach where they've taken uh, hundreds of logins or, you know, a application has been hacked and, you know, millions of emails have been uh, taken and put on the dark web, oftentimes it is because um, it could be that an application had a vulnerability and uh, and the bad actor found a way to get in, take data. Um, bad actors also will take um, ransom of the entire environment when they're able to find a way through a vulnerability from an application. So, you know, we're explaining to you the why. Why does why is secure coding important for engineers? And we're also going to have uh, later today, early tomorrow, I'm going to put out a post on everything that we are going through today with Bandit and how to scan your Python code. We're going to give you that how to. OK, so um, let's jump right in. I hope I explained everything on the install process, but. When you go to GitHub and you search for Bandit, the documentation is really good, except, you know, make sure if you're having some install processes, install process errors, it's probably beneficial to set up that virtual environment. Okay, so let's code. For this demonstration, I created a Hello World application. In this Hello World application, we are um, coding using the Hackware Security Awareness API. And if you are a developer who needs to build a phishing simulation platform or a risk assessment or even a training platform, we give you a way to build that in minutes. And so um, you can find more about the API on hackware.com slash dev. We have the documentation right here and um, it's easy to, to sign up to be a developer. And so this is where all of our hello world code samples are, are coming from. And, uh, and we're going to use Python today. So in this example, we are getting a token. We are connecting to that uh, API to authenticate, and then we get the token. Then we are going to get a list of uh, lesson plans that has, you know, a list of courses. And so that's what this uh, function is doing. And then what we're doing also is once we get that list, we're emailing the user, letting them know that their course uh, content has been created and it's ready. And so here um, at the bottom here, you can see how we are um, calling those different um, calling those different functions. Now let's run it. Let's run the hello world code. Um, so here you can see when you're running in a banded virtual environment, you'll see this little um, indicator here. And um, let's run it. So to run your code, you don't have to do anything special um, to your, your code to make it support Bandit. Bandit is going to automatically look at common security vulnerabilities and help you um, navigate better. If I could spell, let's see, band it. There we go. And then we're going to type in the hello world application and this is for python when i run it okay <laughs> let's see maybe i need to set up the environment again maybe there's a timeout all right there we go um and that's you know when you're going live every nothing is perfect so bear with me Okay, so let's let's look at the the output from Bandit. The first thing it's saying is that it um, it doesn't find a module. So you can configure Bandit, you know, and you can create a config file that tells it exactly how to analyze your code. So you may want it to 
um, you know, look for a shell injection or SQL injection. You may want it to skip certain lines of code, or you may have specialized tests for special uh, code environments and you may want to um, you may want to indicate what test to use so you know you can extend the the common modules that bandit provides and you can build your own and so I didn't create any for this session but I took the Liberty but I am using their common code uh, analyzer and it already found a couple things that need to be improved it's it's found the, the it says they're low um, severity but the confidence is high it is saying that it's telling me the line in on the uh, code that needs to be improved and it's showing me that line. So here it can detect that I have plain text keys in my application. It's identif identified it two places. So here it's telling you possible hard-coded password. Um, and so it found that I'm using keys, the key and secret key, and I have um, passed that into this function. It also has determined that I have a username and password, and that's the username and password for um, trying to get into a certain, getting to email for my example. And here at the bottom, just further looking at the report that it generated is it's showing you the total, ni total number of lines of code that it analyzed. And then it's also showing you the number of lines that it skipped. And so that goes back to what I was saying earlier. You can configure this, uh, configure modules to where it can skip lines. It can look at certain numbers of a certain number of lines, but I went with the default. So it went and it scanned um, my entire application. And then here's the metrics. So the metrics is it's showing you um, it, it ranks all of its findings by low, medium and high. And it found too low. Those are these um, plain text credentials that were in my code. And then it's giving you its confidence. So this confidence level is medium. If it was uh, undefined or you know low, then you know you may want to. If you're if you're automating you know your process, you may want to um, you know have someone come in and look at the low ones versus. If something shows up with a confidence of medium or high, you may automate and have certain things stop or, you know, um, but they give you those metrics so you can determine how to move forward. And, you know, as we look at line 55 in our code here, you can see that, yes, I do have a plain text key and a plain text, um, you know, secret key in there. And then once I remove those out of the code, rerun bandit, it would show that I don't have any findings. And, um, uh, and so that's, that is, you know, one easy way to quickly just analyze your code and make sure that it is, it is secure. It's, you know, resilient and, um, and yeah, so that's all that we have today. I hope you enjoy the, um, the, I hope you enjoy, bear with me. I'm trying to work this thing, but I hope you enjoy the, um, presentation or the discussion on secure coding. And I want you all, I want this to be an interactive experience. I want you all to comment below and tell me about other secure topics that you want us to discover, I mean, dis, dis, discuss. And I want you to share anything that you have tried that has worked. This is a community that we're building to help developers um, understand secure coding, how they can easily implement that into their development environment. And we also have a video that we launched earlier this month that's talking about how your Git repository can analyze your code. Um, and so, you know, we're looking for frictionless ways to help engineers and um, try back 
next month. So next month, we're going to have another session on secure coding. If you are a developer or a InfoSec professional and you need to build a, a powerful security awareness and training application, use us. Use the Hackware API. We will be happy to power your application needs in minutes. This is um, Tiffany from Hackware and I am out. Have a great day.